at Local 6's Chris Yu live for us at the production facility. And Chris, what's happening right now? Firefighters with the Paducah Fire Department, they're inside the Dippin' Dots facility on Coleman Road right now, going through the building, making sure everything is safe, making sure all the nitrogen is turned off, and using that pile of sandbags to reinforce the walls that's preventing all this water here from seeping into the village. You can see how close the water is to the town's community center over there. Community Kitchen in Paducah used to serve their meals inside the building, but due to social distancing concerns, they now have a new arrangement, curbside and walk-up pickup. This this is the man from the state fire marshal's office. They are on scene investigating, and if you walk with me this way, you can see that investigators, they are on scene right now questioning neighbors about what happened yesterday. Just put them in one of several drop boxes throughout the community. The books are then taken to this quarantine room where they are placed in these fully enclosed bins. And it is closed right now because of this behind me, a giant landslide that probably happened early yesterday morning. The security camera pointing at it is fairly large and in plain sight. In fact, the thief walked by three cameras without making much of an effort to disguise himself. A distant cousin of Dillo, her name is Sarah. You can see that the stone is leaning this way a little bit and the top part of the stone was knocked off and she actually helped treat the first COVID-19 patient in the state. Today she shared her thoughts on the vaccine's impact. After nine months of long days and long nights. Every day I get a request to pick up overtime. Working in the front lines, treating hundreds of patients. It's emotionally, physically and mentally exhausting. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Some hope for this to end. Tuesday, UK healthcare employees were vaccinated for the first time. One of them said, good so far, no issues. And the other one said um, she just has a little soreness in her sight, but she feels normal and she's super excited about it. One of the nurses at UK is Jennifer Alonso, who is from Paducah. She was vaccinated Wednesday. I am extremely excited to get vaccinated. I think it's the first time in a few months that I feel some relief. Alonso helped treat the first COVID-19 patient in the state at UK Chandler Hospital. Unfortunately, she has seen a spike in the number of patients in recent weeks. We've added um, pretty much 16 beds to our ICU, so we're a total 32 bed ICU now. Alonso says at any given time, there's between 80 and 90 plus COVID-19 patients at her hospital. It is very troublesome to see how many people are sick from this virus and how many people um, are dying and dying without their families. But she's optimistic that will soon change with the arrival of vaccines. Our hopes is that it will prevent uh, people from getting sick and from people dying unnecessarily. In Paducah, Chris Yu, WPSD, Local 6. At the childhood home of Stephen Elder, there's plenty of activity outside. <laughs> While inside, there are plenty of memories. Memories of his dad as a star athlete. I said the dad, you're my hero. Memories of his dad as a man of faith. And I know that he prays, you know, very deeply. Now it's Stephen who's praying while his dad remains in the hospital. We believe with all our heart that he's going to come back home. Stephen's dad, Joey Elder, is a school bus driver at Fancy Farm Elementary. But about two months ago, he was diagnosed with COVID-19. He's been on the ventilator for 55 days, and he's slowly coming back to us. Stephen has been keeping track of his dad's progress and posting on Facebook. Every milestone celebrated like day 44, when Joey became more responsive. Uh, he was moving his eyes around. He was moving his head back and forth. Then on day 50, Joey squeezed his son's hand. There you go. Try to move your arm. Good job, Dad. And on day 55, Joey had some mouth movement. Those beautiful blue eyes was, was wide open, and, and you could tell that he was, he was trying to say something. Stephen is grateful of all the support his family has received every time he posts about his dad. He has students um, that, that want to follow his progress. Obviously, he has his family that want to, wants to follow his progress. So it's extremely therapeutic to me. And sometimes it's overwhelming at times, just the number of people that I know that my dad's life has touched. About a year and a half ago, Joey recorded this video message for Stephen. I love you, boy. And I'll love you until the day I die. But even after I leave this world, the love will never end. Stephen recently played that video back to his dad at his hospital bed. 
watching it together with him in the hospital, listening to the words that he was telling me, with him holding my hand, was just the greatest blessing I, I think that he's ever given me. It began with a call on social media. And in one day, more than a thousand volunteers from across the country answered, all wanting to help finish what this woman started. The response was rapid and overwhelming. People from Kentucky to Idaho to Delaware, each doing their part to ensure Rita's legacy lives on. Each step just got more and more exciting. Rita Smith was 99 when she passed away in Cook County, Illinois last August. It was during an estate sale at Rita's home when Shannon Downey bought this embroidered map. Shannon then went upstairs and found a box of fabric. Turns out it was a quilting project that Rita started but never finished. But when I, when I found this one, I realized it was massive and would take the rest of my life to do by myself. Um, but I bought it because I knew that it had to be done. So Shannon got on Instagram to ask for help finishing Rita's quilt. And within a few months, it was complete thanks to the work of about 150 people from 34 states and Canada. I'm so glad you guys were here. On Saturday, Rita's quilt debuted at the National Quilt Museum in Paducah. I think that art, in this case, is what is our common language. So that's what has brought us all together. For Shannon, it means Rita can now rest easy. It's it is a gift, um, and I, I don't take that lately. And for everyone involved, it means new friendships for the rest of their lives. <laughs> the most memorable part is, is actually getting to meet the other women that I, that I crafted with, to get to hug them and, and find out where they're from and hear their story. In Paducah, Chris Yu. We are forever connected. WPSD Local 6. We have proof caught on camera from the story you just watched about that super load there. Check out this video from the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet District 1 Facebook page as the truck makes its way down the street out of nowhere. Our own Chris Yu appears. He's running with camera in hand <laughs> to get the perfect shot. There it is again in slow-mo. Run, Chris, run. Good job.